In this lesson, we look at attacks against cryptography methods. The script for this video is available above or at the end of the video. We can look at crypt analytic attacks from two perspectives, that of the security architect and that of the crypt analyst. The attack vectors used for bypassing encryption differ between them. The crypt analyst is looking for ways to attack a cipher. The security architect is interested in understanding encryption implementation and use and the weaknesses associated with them in order to manage the risk. Security architects use the results of crypt analysis to determine which cryptography approaches to use and how. Four attack models are generally important to security architects cipher text only, known plain text, chosen plain text, and chosen ciphertext. The purpose of these models is to recover plain text or the key. Let's look at each. Ciphertext only attacks often rely on the absence of sufficient entropy. Cryptographic entropy is the measure of the presence of language and other patterns that carry over from the plain text to the ciphertext, including the format of the encrypted message or form. In this example, two obvious patterns exist between the plain text and the simple substitution ciphertext, the double letters and word links. This is an example of low entropy. Note that there are no patterns between the AES ciphertext and the plain text. This is an example of high entropy. High entropy resists frequency attacks used in ciphertext only attacks. For a more detailed look at entropy and ciphertext only attacks, Scan the QR code shown. In a known plaintext attack, the threat actor knows some or all of the plaintext within an encrypted message, which the threat actor also has. Once the plaintext and the ciphertext strings are known for the same text, it may be possible for the threat actor to determine the key. In this example, Adam intercepted an encrypted message that Alice sent to multiple recipients. Adam also has access to a compromised system on which he has access to the plaintext. If Adam knows the encryption algorithm used, he can now attempt to determine the key. In chosen plaintext attacks, the threat actor knows arbitrary plaintext that might be encrypted. Often, the threat actor has some control over the plaintexts and their content. After the plaintexts are encrypted, the threat actor has access to the ciphertext. This ability to compare plaintext to ciphertext can result in collecting information about the cipher solution, including the key. In a chosen ciphertext attack, the threat actor knows both the plaintext and the ciphertext. In this example, Bruce pulls known ciphertext, decrypts it, and then keeps the plain text ciphertext sets. Analyzing this information can result in determining the key. These four attack models are references that enable good understanding of how cryptography solutions can be compromised. However, solutions like AES are not susceptible to any of them. For example, in the chosen ciphertext attack, the use of an initialization vector, strong keys, and multiple passes makes it impossible to extract the key by decrypting known ciphertext. As I said before, the previous models describe efforts to recover plaintext or keys associated with encryption. Other attacks focus on hashes and how they're used, including man in the middle, birthday, and replay. Man-in-the-middle attacks happen when a threat actor inserts himself between an authorized user and a resource with which she is trying to connect. In this example, Evan intercepts the HTTPS session establishment request to one of Alice's organization's cloud applications. Evan establishes a secure session with Alice and with the cloud application as Alice. As far as the cloud app knows, it's communicating with Alice. Now, Evan intercepts all traffic between Alice and the cloud application. Because the secure session terminates in both directions with Evan, 
Evan can see all data in the plain text. The birthday attack, also known as the collision or reverse hash matching attack, tries to discover weaknesses in a hashing algorithm that allow two or more plain texts to have the same hash value. This breaks the expectation that no two plain texts can have the same hash value. It breaks the validity of things like digital signatures and file hashes. The birthday attack uses the mathematics related to the birthday problem in probability theory. The birthday problem deals with the probability that two people in a given set of people, like a classroom, will have the same birthday. For example, there is more than a 50% chance that two people in a class of 23 students will have the same birthday. There are multiple approaches to calculating the birthday probability. I chose the one at the link shown. In this approach, we calculate the probability that there are not two people with the same birthday. The formula for this multiplies the number of days in the year less one of the class members. The person whose birthday we are trying to match cannot be included in the calculation, so we begin with 365 times 364. We divide the product of 365 to the power of the number of students we are considering. In the first example, we are comparing Alex to one other student. In the final formula, we are comparing all students in the classroom to Alex. So the probability that there will not be a match is 49.27%. The probability that there will be a match, then, is over 50%. The larger the class, the higher the probability of a match. In a replay attack, the threat actor intercepts secure network communication. He then delays delivery or resends it to cause a system to do something beneficial to his attack objectives. This delay or resend is done either at the sending system or from the threat actor system. In this example, I show a replay attack, also known as pass the hash. Bella sends her hashed password to the application server to access an application to which she has authorized access. Eve intercepts the hash. Eve can then use Bella's user ID in the intercepted hash maliciously to access the same application. If Bella uses the same password for multiple resources on network segments Eve can access, then Eve has the ability to spread her attack across network resources that are also accessible to Bella. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.